A Good Thing, written by Sean Hines. Exterior, diner, night. MC, a tired-looking 27 years old black male, stands by the door, holding a distinctly patterned green duffel bag. He cautiously looks around, then turns his attention towards the other side of the door. As he peers in, his eyes dart back and forth. He exhales deeply, takes a paper out of his pocket, stares at it, then shoves it back in. As he does this, he feels something else in his pocket and takes it out. He holds it gently between his fingers and lifts it to his eyes. It is a yellow butterfly hair clip. He stares at deeply. He refocuses, then shoves it in his pocket. He looks around once more, then pulls the door and enters. Interior, diner, same. It is late, and patrons sit in the diner scattered about, eating and talking. Some sit alone, and some sit in pairs. MC, though unsure of his direction, walks quickly through the diner. In an attempt to avoid eye contact, he looks up and then back down, while quickly scanning the area. His eyes eventually land on Bill, who is seated in a corner. Bill, a tall, medium-built black man, around 30 years old, with a cool but menacing way about him, sits eating a sandwich. He grins as MC approaches. MC slithers onto the bench and looks around cautiously. After a moment of silence, he speaks. Somebody took my money. Good to see you too. Where have you been all week? Bill reaches over the table, greets MC with their familiar handshake. MC performs it quickly, without care. I had two of these bags in my place. One with clothes, one with money. I went back and checked tonight. The money's gone. I think Kevin took it. Where have you been? What? Where have I been? I've been where you've been, right? Where all of us should have been since last week. Hiding. Hiding? Yeah, hiding, remember? Bullets, glass everywhere, Dave getting killed, a guard rolling around bleeding... Yeah, Kev's plan had some holes. Some? And that bastard stole my money. What money are you talking about? My, the police are looking for me. I need to get the fuck out of here money. Oh, you mean the police are looking for us and we gotta get the fuck out of here money, right? Yeah, whatever. We gotta go talk to Kevin. Now. MC turns to stand up. Before he can, Bill interrupts. So let me get this straight. MC turns and faces Bill again. Kevin gives us bad information on a job, Dave gets killed, and your priority is to talk to Kevin about your missing money. We need to talk to him anyway, right? MC gets up. He takes a few steps towards the exit door. We can't talk to him. Why not? MC turns back and sits back down urgently. You don't know where he is? You check with that girl he's always with? Uh, what's her name? We can't talk to him because I already did. Bill stares at MC. Letting the meaning sink in. Jesus. When? How? Doesn't matter. MC thinks for a moment. I saw something on the news about a body found near the Canarsie Pier. Bill stares at him, but says nothing. Bill? Like I said, we talked. MC thinks about it while looking at the ceiling. MC then looks at Bill. You clean the body, the area? Sure did, MC. Hair, teeth, fingerprints, ID, no cameras. We have to be careful. We. We weren't around, remember? We were hiding. This wild bill shit is gonna get us caught. Me and you have a script. You think it up, I make it happen. When you don't do your part, I have to improvise. You texted me to meet you here, right? That means you have the money from the job? Yep, in the car. Good. Let's go get it, split it, so I can get the hell out of here. Get out of here and go where? I just need my money. After a pause, Bill fumbles through his pockets looking for his keys. He finds them, starts to get up, then stops. Remember that lady who served food at Riverdale? The one you were crazy about? Miss... Uh, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Miss Jackie. Yeah, I saw her. She looked like shit. They both laugh. For a moment, MC forgets about anything else and sits back, reminiscing. <laughs> Riverdale House... Man, I hated that place. Hey, man. We had some bad things happen there. We had some good things happen there. We met there, remember? Which category would that fall under? 
They look at each other for a moment, then laugh. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. I came there after my mom died. No other family. So they shipped you off to the foster care home. That wasn't a home. That was a gladiator camp. Remember Big Tony? Do I remember Big Tony? Motherfucker, do you remember Big Tony? They both laugh heartedly. He kicked your ass daily. <laughs> remember the day you told me to fight him in the cafeteria in front of everyone? You said you'd help. Yeah, and you didn't want to. Hell no, he was huge. <laughs> they laugh more. But you did it. And on the beating we gave him sent a message to everybody. Yeah, it did. Been friends from that day. Now look at us. Who would ever imagine it would be us here, pulling off the big jobs, on top. We had never gone back to the bottom. Silence rests between them. MC doesn't respond. He puts his hand on his jacket pocket and feels something. He pulls it out. It is the yellow butterfly hair clip. The paper from his pocket falls on the floor without him noticing. He lifts the clip in front of his face. Why do you have that? Found it in my apartment while looking for my money. I can't remember where I got it from. It always reminded me of my mom. Whatever, man. Toss that shit. You want to know something? You plan on killing me? What? I knew this guy who would say whenever someone says you want to know something, the person hearing it probably won't live long enough to repeat it. You want to know something or not? All right, let me hear it. I can't remember what my mother looked like. She's just a blur. Bill peers over to table at a woman sitting alone. She is, has a stack of books and a plate of food in front of her, but she is not eating or reading, just staring at them both. It's been a while, I guess. I read a book that said that your mind will sometimes do that, you know? Block stuff out. Why would it do that? My mom used to take me to this park. It had yellow flowers and butterflies everywhere. One time we saw this butterfly come out of its shell, or cocoon, whatever you call it. She said we were witnessing a miracle. Sounds magical. She said the caterpillar did a good thing by becoming what it was supposed to be, and God gave it wings for a reward. This is total bullshit. MC stuffs the hair clip back in his pocket. I used to have a picture of me and her, but I lost it a while back. After a moment of silence, Bill clears his throat. I don't want to sound, uh, what's the word, insensitive, but who gives a fuck? What? Who gives a fuck? Fuck that and fuck them. Fuck who? All of them. Anyone in our past. Fuck them. We've been taking care of each other since I was 12 years old. They left us, so why are you thinking about them? My mom didn't leave me. She died. What's the difference? She ain't here, right? You need to get focused. Focused? Focused on what, Bill? On this, motherfucker. This. We are winning. MC looks around the diner. That's what this is? This is winning? Dave is dead. You shot a security guard who just happened to be a cop. How was I supposed to know that? He wasn't in uniform. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget. You didn't even have a motherfucking mask on when you did it. We are winning. You done? I don't know about you, but I'm over all this winning that we're doing. This is a speed bump, an anthill. Kevin's been handled. You hear yourself? Loud and fucking clear. You hear yourself? Dave. Here we fucking go. Dave knew the risks, like we all did. Dave died right in front of me, his eyes rolling back in his head. What did he have? What did he do with his life? No property, no kids, no nothing. He didn't even have a girlfriend he could trust with his gym locker combination. Tired of MC's assertion, Bill interjects. He had us. Like a blanket, silence covers the conversation. I'm not going out like that. You got another option I don't know about? You got a master's degree hiding somewhere? High school diploma, maybe? Because as far as I know, this is it. This is what we do, and we are good at it. None better. MC stares silently at the clock. I need my money, Bill. That's your problem. That's been your problem since the day we met. You're always looking out for you. Who else am I supposed to look out for? Bill stares at him, then grins wryly. He takes his keys and puts them on the table. Go get your money, MC. After a moment, MC snatches the keys, gets up, and looks at Bill. You should get out of here, too. I'll leave the getting out of here to you. I mean, I'll be around. I'm just, you know, laying low. 
I'd let low too, but I have a small problem I have to fix. MC starts to walk away. As long as it's not my problem. Well. MC stops. A girl was in the office last Saturday. MC turns around and looks at Bill in disbelief. What girl? Nah, nobody else was there. She was hiding. MC moves in and stands over Bill. He holds the keys and the duffel bag in hands. Did she see us? Maybe, maybe not. After the guard was shot. The cop. She ran out of a side door. I noticed when I was checking the security tapes. She ran past the street camera outside. From what I hear, the cops are already looking for her. I had my mask on, right? Well, at some point you did, at some point you didn't. But hey, if she didn't run to the cops by now, then she probably won't, right? MC looks desperately at his watch. What if the cops find her? Uh, riding on a bunch of ifs, huh? Do we have any idea who she is, where she is? Bill looks at MC for a moment, then turns his head and looks at the woman sitting alone, then back at MC. Younger? MC bows his head in frustration and sits. He looks at the woman, then stares at the table. You got a plan? Planning is your department, remember? MC looks at the clock again. Talk to her. If it's not her, just let her go. And if it is her? Then take her ID. Tell her we know where she lives. The usual stuff. But that ain't the usual stuff. MC turns and looks at the woman, then at the clock. I gotta go. I gotta go. He gathers the bag and the keys. He hastily stands up and steps quickly toward the exit door. Bill leans over and picks the paper off the floor and places it in his pocket. He sips his drink, then looks at the woman again. 